Hi. Thanks so much to those of you who got here early and are already in the comments. I love it. I'm going to check comments just to be sure you can hear me because, you know, we've all had, we all know I've had those issues, right? Uh, I am Dana K. White. I am the author of several books, including Organizing for the Rest of Us. That's my latest one. And I answer questions mostly on Tuesdays around this time. I take questions ahead of time at AskDanaKWhite.com. Yeah, you can hear me. Thank you. AskDanaKWhite.com ask right there. Um, you can ask me questions to uh, that might be f answered on a future YouTube video, or sometimes I answer them in my podcast, which you can find at a slob comes clean dot com slash podcasts with an s i thought that i had that little banner here do you want to remind you that um i've got a couple of things coming up so i am working hard on my certification process so i have a five-step decluttering process that is progress and only progress you don't make a bigger mess works i mean it's guaranteed to work if you'll actually follow the steps um but uh it works really well with other people. And so this is something I've been asked for a lot. So I am working on that. If you would like to be notified when that comes out, hopefully it's gonna be December 1st with possibly pre-sale the week before that, um, you can go to aslobcomesclean.com slash certification. I also wanna say, I know I'm doing all this advertising stuff here, but this is while people are getting on, um, that if you are interested in being a part of a group where people speak this language, this progress and only progress. I know this is not how, you know, people assume you have to talk about decluttering. So we kind of talk about it differently here. And um, if you want to be in a group of people who all speak that same language, talk about it in the same way, use the five-step process, all of that. Um, I just highly recommend those uh, connecting with my other patrons. So you can go to patreon.com slash slob comes clean to find out more about that. It's a lovely group of people who are very supportive. And I think that, um, you know, sometimes I feel a little bad that, I mean, I'm answering questions that were submitted, not yesterday, a little while ago. Um, I know that we all learn from them because we all have similar types of questions and things to work through in our own homes, but it's a great place where you can go and, you know, ask this question of other people who look at things the same way or trying to follow the same process and they can help you. So, okay, let's get going. First question on the March 22nd of 2022 podcast, I, uh, you use the example of where would I look for this gum wrapper if I needed it, which would help a person realize it was trash. Have you ever used your system with a hoarder? I have thought about it and it would take a long time. Oh, I actually do have these sort of kind of, um, I have thought about it and it would take a long time, but I could see it being a very gentle way of helping someone because you said to let the person you are helping decide on what is trash and the house as a container is very literal. Yes. Um, I actually recommend that you, uh, and you very well may have the person who asked this question, but for those of you who are like, yeah, I want to talk more about this. There are two podcasts and I wrote down there are Numbers are in, I think it's 336 and 337 or 337 and 338, something like that. The numbers are in the description of this video um, where I specifically spoke with both a hoarding cleanout expert who uses my five-step process with his clients. He talks about how he does that, how he works with people, and then someone else who also you know, personally has experience with a hoarding disorder and how it has been very helpful for her. And that's actually where I got that from. She's the one who told me I couldn't identify trash. But when I asked myself, where would I look for this first? Then my brain was able to realize, oh, that's trash because I would never go looking for a used gum wrapper or an old gum wrapper. Okay. So, um, so yeah, it, it absolutely does work. I'm not a mental health professional. There are so many layers and levels of things. I get it. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, this is how you solve this problem. I am just saying, because I know from personal experience and I know from talking to others who have personal experience using this process, um, with those who do, uh, have hoarding disorder, it, it works. 
I love the way that this question asked it. Um, said, I could see it would take a long time. So you acknowledge that. Okay. I think that's key. And uh, I could see it being a very gentle way of helping someone. That's why it works. The problem is that sometimes if you go into that situation trying to help someone, it can feel like we got to do this to make any kind of an impact. Do you know what I mean? But when you're, and so, and sometimes, and that's one of the things that the um, expert who, you know, does hoarding cleanouts, one of the things he talked about was like, sometimes it depends on how much time we have. It depends on who has hired me, either the family or the actual, you know, person who is dealing with us in their home that determines where they are on being ready. So there's so many things there that I'm not even, you know, qualified to go into. But I will say, I think that you have the right mindset, assuming that maybe you have a situation where you're thinking of this is it's going to take a long time. You know, if, if you are wanting to do this with someone, it's going to take a long time and it's gentle. Okay. And I will tell you from personal experience, it can be very hard because it's like, there is an answer for everything. Like there is a reason, there is a story behind everything. So it is not, um, it's not easy. It's not quick, but through the process, the understanding of, okay. And the understanding of limits and all that kind of stuff, it, it's not going to be a, I'm going to, I mean, it, you're not going to be able to give a little speech and say, okay, you're all better now. Instead, it's going to be walking alongside and helping work through because that sometimes that slow progress is the real, like dig your fingernails in and make actual traction you know, kind of progress as opposed to we want a quick fix. We want this to be over and done with. And yet so many times that doesn't actually allow for teaching and changing of mindset and processing what's happening in a way that's going to make it sustainable. So anyway, um, but yeah, I, I, it does work because I have been not, not, I'm not saying every single situation or every single level that we're talking about, but I have received enough feedback from both people who themselves have been diagnosed with hoarding disorder and say that this process works. And those who work with those, I have gotten enough feedback to be able to say, yes, it'll work, especially because you're coming at it from the perspective of knowing it's going to take time and knowing that the whole point is to be gentle. Okay. All right. Um, Next one. Okay. I will read the whole question. I had to kind of edit it down to get it into the little format here because I only had a certain number of characters. Question. I've been decluttering a lot. Okay. I've been decluttering a lot, but as a grandchild of hoarders, I'm dealing with multi-generational emotions and items. I can see a dent now and I'm getting hopeful again. I'm still dealing with my mom's stuff and my child's stuff. My child is more compliant slash retrainable than my senior mom. She is surprised so many items were stored at my house and I'm wanting to just throw the lot out as she didn't ask or come for anything yet. What would you advise? This is tough because I don't know your actual situation. I don't know if there was an, I mean, you say she didn't know they were stored. I don't know if there was an agreement. I don't know if, I don't know all that. Um, but I will say that when it comes to your house, you have to prioritize. I mean, you are, you can't control someone else's house and their everyday living, but your goal in what you're doing is to control your environment and what your family is living in. And so you do have to get that stuff out and you know, they're, they're sentimental and I, I get all of that, but remember the container concept, the reality of the spaces that you have a treasured item needs to actually be treasured, meaning give it a space, give it room to actually be appreciated as opposed to being an annoyance when it's part of a pile. Um, but as far as the question about your mom, you're wanting to throw the lot, the lot out. And you said she was surprised that a lot of it was even at your house. And so if in her mind that stuff is gone, meaning, and I don't know the situation, you have to assess this for yourself, but if in her mind, she's like, oh, I have decluttered that stuff out of my house. She has no idea where it is. Then 
that would be a situation where now you declutter it from your house, meaning, you know, donate it because of that. Now, if there was an agreement or understanding or whatever, then that obviously makes this different. But um, what would I advise? I would advise to maybe just have a very broad conversation with your mom. You know, I am, instead of naming specific items, <coughs> sorry, that almost like did the ice thing where it went all over me, but that's why these little um, questions are there. So you can't see that anyway. Um, but I, I would advise that you have a broader conversation and just say, hey, I am working on decluttering my house. Um, I know you've decluttered a lot over the years. Um, as I come across things, is there anything specific that you've wondered where it is? And I can, you know, or, or, you know, just, just be like, I, I'm coming across some things that used to be yours, but I'm planning on just getting rid of them. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's tough. It's really, really hard to know in a situation. So that's why I give these, I hesitate sometimes on these kind of things, but I know that they're real issues. And so it's like, how can you make, how can you just make a broad thing of, um, of that? Cause it sounds like she doesn't care. Well, if she doesn't care, then yeah, you can just get rid of it. But if you are worried that she does care, I would be very broad in that instead of asking about every single item, especially if you're concerned about her wanting to bring that stuff back into her house and that's not good for her safety, you know? So yeah, I don't feel like I answered that one very well. Okay, here we go. Here we've got one. What do you do with old journals? Well, if you're asking me specifically, what do I do with old journals? Well, I don't really journal. So I can't answer this necessarily from, I can't answer this from personal experience because I, I, that's not something I do. I, I always laugh because, you know, sometimes people who write on the internet, you know, I started blogging back in 2009. People were like, oh, well, I had always journaled. And so I did this and I was like, well, I always hadn't journaled. But then I had a different kind of motivation when I was like, oh, I'm writing for an actual audience and purpose. It, I don't know. I just, whatever. Um, sometimes people assume that if you blog that you must have journaled. I did not. But here's what I can say. And I know this is difficult. The container concept. Like take this emotional situation that feels like this is your identity. This is your history. This is everything for you. And say, nobody is going to say that's not your identity or not your history or not important or not meaningful. We're not going to say that at all. But what we are going to say is space has a limit space is finite. So what space do you have? And this could be different according to different phases of life. What space do you have to keep journals in, you know, and that, and I, I'm saying this is somewhat, my daughter does journal, like she journals and, and I think that's amazing. And I'm do think about, okay, at some point there's going to be a lot of those, but what space do you have for this? And then letting that space be the, the determiner, you know, and I know that's hard, but it's like, at some point you might have to say, okay, I'm going to, if this space is finite and this is all the room that I have, I'm, I'm going to have to put my most pivotal years. I'm going to keep those journals. I know this is so hard to say, right? Because some people are like, you can't do that with journals, except that every physical item has to have a space to be if you want your house to be under control right so we have to apply the container concept so it's like there is no there is no thing that the container concept doesn't apply to even if it is highly personal and sentimental and all that kind of stuff the container concept applies it might mean if you love journals and you've written in for a year and you're 60 years old and i'm not going to do that math um but you may say you know what i am devoting an entire closet to journals because that's how important they are to me now that doesn't mean that your brooms and your mops and your cleaning supplies are just all over the kitchen floor because well i gotta have a closet for my journals no it's it's you see what I'm saying? Like you make those choices and you say, I, the space determines how much I can keep. And so I can only give a closet to that if I also have space 
for these other things that would otherwise be in the closet to live and to be. And maybe I say, I'm going to get rid of my formal China because if I do that, then I have the, the space where that was stored. I can now use that to store journals because if I have, because I'm making a choice, my formal China that I've used six times in 60 years. Do we say 60 is the age of a minute ago that I've used six times and my journals that it feels like my heart's being ripped out. Okay. I just have to make a choice. So you can't, you can keep anything. You just can't keep everything. Well, what if, if it comes down to, I really only have one shelf that is literally all I can or one box. That's all I can keep of journals. Well, at that point, then you have to make some of those tough decisions and you say, well, then which journals are most important? And I'm going to put those in first, the journal from the year when I met my spouse, the journal from the year when I, you know, something pivotal career, what, you know, just like these, these five journals here, those are the keys and I'm going to put them in and then I'm going to, you know, put my next favorites in until it's full. And then once it's full, oh, well, and then I keep on writing in a journal and when it's time to go store it in that space, then I go, oh, was this year's actually is important. Oh, okay. And then I have to start one ending, one outing. I mean, it's, it is tough. Nobody's saying it's easy, but I am saying the container concept applies period, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, like you can literally decide I am going to own one pair of underwear for the rest of my life. And I'm going to wash that pair of underwear every single day for the rest of my life so that I can keep more journals that if you want to do that, you go right ahead. And some of you are thinking, well, that's ridiculous. Of course, that means I have to get rid of journals. And some of you are like, okay, fine. I'll do the one in pair of underwear. I mean, the whole point is you just embrace the space that you have, because as I had to accept for my house, the thing that changed things was when I realized if I try to keep more than can physically fit usably and get to in the space that I have, there is literally no hope of my house being under control. It can't be under control if I have more stuff than space. Okay. All right. Did that come across as mean? I hope it didn't. All right. Um, next. Okay. Here we go. My issue is, and all these all caps that are in this thing that y'all see there in the little thing that was all like a direct copy paste. And then I kind of edited out some words to make it fit better. My issue is knowing items will be used slash appreciated. So I would like advice for someone who wants it all gone, all caps, but the items left to declutter are in the to sell category. Example, room of craft supplies, eBay items that are worth money. I'm saying that big because it's all caps, etc. Okay. First of all, I just want to say that what I'm going to say, I could probably say it as nice as possibly, and it would still hurt your feelings because I have been in your position. I totally get what you're going through and it's painful. It is painful to get to the point where you get past some of these things that are stopping you from decluttering. Okay. Um, and I used to hear people say things similar to what I'm probably going to say here in a minute. And I would think they're heartless. They have no feelings, probably have no friends and I don't want to be like them. And so I get it. Like, I get that this is going to feel harsh, but I'm coming to you from the other side. Like I'm coming to you as the person who had all these same feelings and realized that letting these feelings that you've expressed here with all caps, letting those feelings determine 
how quickly or how easily I could get stuff out of my house was making my home miserable. I didn't like my house. I was frustrated with my home. I couldn't function easily. I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do because I was letting these same mindsets that you're saying keep me from getting stuff out. Okay. So knowing items will be used and appreciated. So that's what, that's what this person has said. My issue is knowing that items will be used or appreciated. There is no way. There is no way. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to come at this from the perspective of the person who everybody used to give their stuff to people gave me their stuff because they thought Dana will appreciate this because when they gave it to me, my eyes lit up. Y'all, I love cool stuff. Some of y'all think it's freaky. That's my, that's a wig. I found it at a garage sale. It was like, it's, it's like pin curled. I mean, it, it, it's the best. Okay. So I like all the weird stuff. So if somebody has a wig that literally no one, no one would actually wear as a wig, who are they going to give it to? Well, Dana, right? Because I am the person whose eyes would light up when you gave me this family treasure that you don't want in your house because you don't even like it. You know what I mean? Like I'm the one who's like, oh, that is so cool. Like I think stuff is cool. And yet, so someone, people gave me their stuff thinking they were giving it to someone who would appreciate it. I totally appreciated it. But then it ended up in a pile at my house because it was cool, but it didn't have a place. And... It didn't have a purpose and I had so much stuff in my house that I couldn't possibly keep it under control because I didn't know about the container concept yet. And generally a lot of that stuff, as I, de as I finally decluttered the piles and stuff, a lot of stuff had been damaged. So something that somebody gave to me thinking it was going to be appreciated because I appreciated everything. Um, it wasn't it did not end up being valued the way that they had wanted it to be valued. Okay. So, um, that's something to consider. Also, um, I was gonna say something really, really profound. And now my brain has just lost it. The stuff will be used, appreciated. Oh, here's the thing. Here's how I have had to change how I think of it. I now look at it as, and this is reality. Okay. So I was the theater teacher. I truly used stuff. Like I, when I, when I was first kind of starting out, you know, being able to go drive on my own and spend my own money, I can remember my best friend and I would go to garage sales every once in a while. And she was always like, you buy the weirdest stuff. And I was like, well, it could be a costume someday in the future. And so many of the times I actually did use this stuff, like, especially as a theater arts teacher, you know, I could throw literal weirdo outfits out there and make the kids do improv. And it was all, you know, put to use. And so I was the person who could use all this stuff, but I realized that as I actually was in situations where I needed things, to get the actual thing I needed, I would generally just go to Goodwill or Salvation Army or whatever thrift store and get it. Like, for example, my daughter, who is now 16, when she was probably seven or eight, was in Annie, like as one of the orphans. And uh, it was with this summer theater thing. And they told us, you need to provide these old looking shoes. And I was like, what? What? I mean, I knew I had decluttered some I mean, that were going to be too big for her anyway, but I knew I had decluttered things over the years. I was like, how am I supposed to, y'all, I went to, I went one day to a couple of thrift stores and I literally found, she wasn't with me because she was at practice. I literally found like four pairs now because I'm me, I bought them all and then like gave them to other people uh, who were in the play. But like, I, I found exactly what I needed because I was going and I was looking for that specific item. So I'm going to say it so many times, the best way to connect the a real appreciator with your quirky item is by donating it. 
because people who really truly need and appreciate quirky items look for them in thrift stores. I, I mean, it, it just, it, and so, but, but ultimately you have to get over this. You're not going to know the future of the item because once you give it to someone, it isn't yours. It is their right to then throw it in the trash, give it away, whatever, you know, I, I mean, like it's not yours anymore. You that's, that's part of giving it away. And in the beginning, that can feel so incredibly difficult. And yet the longer that you go, the more you're just like, oh, giving it away was the last decision I ever have to make about that. I don't have to think about it anymore. I can imagine it being in a great situation. I can picture what somebody is going to feel and think and do with it when they find it in a thrift store, but it's not my problem anymore. Like, so even you're keeping it as your problem. And then I also, I encourage you to go back and watch the video where we gave away our suburban um, and how, <laughs> which sounds noble, right? Except that it wasn't because we kept trying to figure out the very best way to give this thing away until it was dead. And then we had to have it towed away and blah, blah. I mean, it was like, and what I came to realize through that experience, this is what, a year and a half ago, maybe what I came to realize through that experience was that I was having a hero complex. Like that was, you know, and, and it's called a complex for a reason, right? Like it's not a, it's not a great thing. It's like, I'm causing harm to this situation by my desire to be the hero in a situation where there really isn't a hero here, you know, it's anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, like my advice on that is that you can't know for sure that it's going to be used and appreciated, but it's chances of being used and appreciated are better when you let it go because it's not being used and appreciated in your house. So like right now you are guaranteeing that it's not being used and appreciated. Instead, it's a frustration, right? So like, yeah. Okay. Um, more of that question. And you say, I would like advice for someone who wants it all gone. And I get that when I felt completely overwhelmed, it was, that's a, that's something that ran through my head. I just want it all gone. I just want it all gone. I just want it all gone, but that's not how it works. Right. Instead it's one item by one item by one item. So let a few things go, let a few more things go. And then that's how you get to it all being gone. But the whole, like, it's so overwhelming. I want it to be gone. That's um, two extremes that don't ever actually match up because they, if it was going to all be gone, it would probably be from a really horrible situation, right? Like a tornado or a fire or something difficult. And you don't want that to happen. Um, but the items left are in the to sell category. Okay. So let's talk about selling room of craft supplies, eBay items that are worth money, etc. They are not worth anything while they're sitting in your house. They're only worth it if you sell them. So my best advice for this, if you truly can't, now first thing to do is the whole donate thing go ahead and start letting some of that go because then you're going to start changing your idea of what is worth like to me because i got to the point where i was donating and i used to be the sell every last thing person when i finally got to the point where i was like everything just gets donated i was like that is worth it to me like somebody taking this stuff and me not having to make sure it's absolutely totally pristine and perfect. And they're going to leave me a bad review if it's not and blah, blah, blah. I don't have to check the authenticity of every last little, I mean, like just being able to put it in a box and donate it. That was incredibly valuable to me. And I started to change how I saw these things. And I was like, worth it. Like I see it as a huge service when somebody takes my clutter, like when they take it away, I'm like, yay. Hallelujah you're my favorite person in the whole world. Wow. I mean, like, that's how I feel now anyway. Um, but if you, if it's the selling things, the number one thing I say to do is find the item that you are most confident is totally worth a lot of money. People are going to be crazy about, and you said eBay, sell it on eBay, do it, sell that one item that you're like, well, obviously this one is going to be worth a lot of money. And people are going to be like, oh, I can't believe you had one of those, whatever, sell it on eBay and find out. No, because one of two things will happen. You will either go, 
that was not that hard. I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. There's something I'm trying to think what it is, but something I was doing recently where I was like dreading it and dreading it and dreading it. And then I finally went and was like, okay, I'm just going to figure out how to do this. And it was so easy and it was done in two minutes, you know, like, so you're either going to go through this process and be like, well, now I know what to do. So now I can actually start getting this stuff out of here. Or you're going to realize, well, that was a lot of work. It didn't sell for what I thought it would. I think I'm just going to donate. It's not worth my time, but it will break through that things just sitting in your house, but not actually doing anything with it. Okay. All right. Um, did I solve all your problems? Good. Okay. I moved within the last year and I still have boxes that me too. And I still actually like almost exactly a year, I think this weekend. Um, I have to burp. I'm sorry. Anyway, that was embarrassing. I moved within the last year and I still have boxes that aren't unpacked because the items don't have a home yet. I don't have a linen closet, but I can't get rid of all my towels and blankets just because I don't have a home for them. I'm working on buying pieces to help store stuff. Oh, wait, I've got this here to help store stuff. Um, but finding ones that are affordable and that I also like is taking longer than I thought. Okay. Couple of things here. You're not unpacking it because it doesn't have a home yet. Totally get that. I mean, we still have some things that I still have to unpack. I don't have a linen closet, but I can't get rid of all my towels and blankets just because I don't have a home for them. Um, no, you can't get rid of all your towels and blankets, but there's a decent chance that you could get rid of some of your towels and blankets. Um, so many, a lot of us who struggle with this stuff have the all or nothing mentality, right? Like I have no linen closet, which means I have no place to put towels and blankets, which means I'm stuck because I can't get rid of all of them because there's no place to put them. Um, I'm assuming you've used towels and blankets a little bit in the past year. Okay. So that means some of them have been unpacked and you know, my mom did not have a linen closet at her house. So I didn't grow up thinking a linen closet was a thing. I just didn't. Um, our towels were, we stored them under the bathroom sink. Like, you know, the, I don't know what you have, but you know, we had like, here's the cabinets under the actual bathroom. And then there was like two over here. And one of those was the towels. That's where, I, that's what I thought was normal. It actually was weird to me when I realized at other people's houses that if there were no towels, that you had to walk naked across the house. I didn't do that, but I'm just saying like, that's where extra towels always were. So your house is your house. The situation that you're in is the situation that you're in. The space that you have is the space that you have. And so where maybe it's where you have been putting those things. I'm trying to think what, what my mom did with blankets. Mom, are you watching? Um, I think they were just in our, like the, the blankets for that bed were just in the closet of that room. I'm thinking, um, anyway, like there are other options and it can, here's the thing. It can be so frustrating when you're like, I don't have a linen closet. So frustrated. I've always had a linen closet. I had it under control in my last house. This is the way it was supposed to be. I don't have a linen closet in this house either. The one that I'm in now, I didn't even think about it till just now. But so we've got blankets in the rooms where they're supposed to be. And then we have, um, yeah, towels and bathroom cabinets, which my kids' bathrooms, yes, they each have their own bathroom. Uh, not each of them, but anyway, whatever. Um, there are two bathrooms for the kids. There's like a cabinet thingy in there. I guess maybe somebody would consider that a linen closet. I don't know. Um, but that's where they, they have their towels and stuff. So I think it's just, it's the letting go of what you wish and saying, okay, what space do I have? And then the key with that always is, and then letting that be the container. So in my last house, you know, I did a video on, where I had this, um, and I still have it. I'm trying to think where I put it. May still be in the garage. Anyway, uh, like a 
coffee table, big box, coffee table kind of thing. That's where we kept our blankets. Oh, I know where it is. Anyway, it's got blankets in it. And so that was the limit for the blankets. Did I have more blankets than that would fit? Yeah, at one time I did. And I had to get rid of those because if the if I had more than would fit in that space, then they were just kind of randomly all over the place. So it's like letting that space be the container and determine because it's not that you have to get rid of all of your things, but things do have to have a place. And so it's like, what is the place, the best place that I have as an option right now? And I'm going to let that space determine how many I can keep. And if I put my favorite towels in there first, what so many times will happen is just going through that process, even if you're like, yeah, but I want to get a better thing for this. Just going through that process will help you sort out. These are the towels we really love. These are the towels that we just keep for emergencies, you know what, I can let these go. Like just going through that process so many times will help break the, um, through that, that feeling of being overwhelmed. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a few questions from the, um, comments. I will go look at your comments now. Um, let's see. Yay. You're here. Okay. Um, so I did, I put my patreon.com slash the slab comes clean up there. That is, um, if you want people to ask these questions of who speak the same language, who are using these same strategies, joining our Patreon is, is really the best thing for that. So, all right. Um, lots of great ideas here on blankets and towels. I love that. Okay. If you would like to ask a question, if you've asked it before, um, go ahead and ask it again, just to make sure that I, I see it. Uh, it always is helpful if you put some question marks, like three question marks at the beginning of your question, because then it's easier for me to notice that we have a question. Um, oh my word, this makes me happy. I don't know. I mean, I haven't read the whole thing, so I don't know for sure if it makes me happy, but I like the first line. I've been Dana K. Whiting it <laughs> for over a year now. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Everybody says, don't do the sentimental stuff first, but here I am at the sentimental starting line after decluttering the whole house. Okay. I'm just going to tell you, if you've decluttered your whole house and you are ready to hit that, uh, sentimental stuff, just know that you're a different person than you were. You said for over a year, you've been Dana K. Whiting, which is my new favorite thing to say, but you've been doing that. You are not the same person who looked through that stuff before you have a different perspective on stuff. You know how to get rid of things. You know the benefit of things being out of your house and never having to think about them again or move them again or deal with them again. It is going to look different to you. You also know that, um, and I know you weren't even asking a question, but here I am. You also know that you have space now. You have space to truly treasure some of those items, which means you can look through a box of sentimental stuff from a time period in your life and say, this is my favorite. I want to have it have a very special place in my home. And it doesn't have to be in a box anymore. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Um, Y'all are doing some good quotes this week. I'm a huge tea pad survivor. I love it. Okay. We got a question. Same person who is Dan Danny K. Whiting. Um, what if decluttering the picture boxes I have means taking them out and putting them into albums, which does take up more space, but are now enjoyed and treasured. Yeah. I mean, like my goal is not to be like, take up as little space as you can. My goal is to use your space the best way for you to function in your home and to enjoy your home. If you are going to enjoy these pictures more when they're in albums, then do that. You're, you're at a place. You just said you've been Dana K. Whiting for a year. It's my favorite thing. Um, but yes, they may take up space and you may say, I'm ready to get rid of these other things to give more space for albums, because that's how I really enjoy this stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions for decluttering to prepare for or during a major renovation project? been D DKWing, <laughs> y'all are making me laugh, for a while and have seen so much success with your techniques. Yay. I'm excited. Um, okay. Here we go. First of all, it's the worst. <laughs> I, 
I am so sorry for what you're about to go through. I've only ever done it to a very small degree and it's the worst. Anyway, not to discourage you at all, but um, do you have suggestions for decluttering to prepare? Yeah, I mean, I would do it the same as a move. Like if you're in a, you said major renovation project, which I'm assuming means everything has to be removed. So go watch my moving videos where I did the, um, the boxes. I bought the number of boxes for the square footage of the house. That might be a really good investment in this to say, I want to use this thing. I'm going to have to go through anyway, which is going to be difficult to really push my decluttering process forward. Okay. So say I'm going to spend the, I think it was like 300 and something dollars, which I know can be a lot of money, but you know, whatever. Um, I don't know if that's possible for you right now or, or not, but if you could say, I'm going to invest in that. And then I'm going to pack my favorite things in those so that that's what I'm going to store. Like that's, I have to store things anyway. It's going to be less room to store. And that's going to help me naturally sort out what doesn't need to come back into my home. And then that stuff can just be donated. I don't know. That's just an idea off the top of my head. Um, okay. I saw another question. Let's see. <laughs> um, thank you. Some of y'all are congratulating me on becoming a, a verb. Okay, here we go. What should I do if where would I look for this first changes for me all the time? Okay. Um, I what I would say on that is just make sure, like, take a deep breath and make sure that you are not saying or thinking, where do I think I would find this? Okay. Because that lends itself to hypothetical thinking and try to really just go, okay, I'm going with instinct here. I'm going to scrub all this other out and I'm going to go, what is my actual instinct? So I just did a session with somebody and, um, it was on video for the certification and I was, so I was doing the video yesterday and watching through it without read, which is really hard because I've had to learn things to do, learn to do things myself and I don't like it. Um, but it was like back scratcher, she had a back scratcher. And I was like, where would you look for this first? And she was like, all over the place. It's just all, all over the place. And I was like, okay. So we, I mean, we just kind of went down and she's like, well, in the living room, I'm like, okay, well, let's go down. Where would you look for it first? Okay. And then finally I was like, okay, close your eyes, picture your back itching. And where would your hand reach first for that? So kind of like, just kind of go, okay, okay. Okay. Where is the first place instinctually that I would look if you're thinking too hard, that can be a problem. And I, I know it can be, it, it's hard, but it, if you're really truly going on instinct, it's going to be the same instinct all, most of the time. What do you do when you're truly frustrated with your decluttering progress and just want to get it done? Get ruthless. I mean, be like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill up twice as much trash as I have been, as I've been doing this. I'm just gonna start counting things as trash because once it's in the trash bag and gone, it's done. I'm going to double the amount of donations that I've been doing. I'm just going to, because that's the beauty of it. It's like, once things are gone, gone, you never have to think about it again. And that's where you really experience that freedom and like, oh my word, I'm making huge progress. So it's like, just say, if I've only, if I've been basically getting rid of two small donate boxes for each space that I go through, well, say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to up that to four big donate boxes or something, but like really getting stuff out, trying to go super ruthless. I, th I think we'll, we'll help on that. Tips on sorting through photographs. This would be sentimental. I've been doing this process for about eight months now. Okay. So this is not my specialty. Um, I know Cass has had different things. Cass from Clutterbug has talked about this before. Here's what I would advise on this is, um, give yourself permission to go through them and trash, 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 go through not making a decision about each individual one first. Okay. And I know you said you've been doing this eight months now, so I'm not sure the whole story here, but, um, but like, as you go through a huge stack, 
say, okay, I'm just going to look for trash, which my husband has said the words to me in the past. I didn't know photographs could be trash, but you know, nowadays we only print the ones we really want. Not that long ago, we were getting pictures of feet and fingers and hairlines and doubles and triples of things and stuff like that. So anyway, get rid, go ahead and say, I'm going to go through this stack and I'm just going to reduce it by getting rid of anything that's super easy. Okay. Because what that will do is that that's my number one strategy for any spaces. You go through and you look for trash because it's non-emotional and we're looking for actual trash, not like, Oh, is this trash? Because actually that had my, you know, that had so-and-so in it that then said this thing and we all got mad. We're not doing that. Okay. We're talking about like actual, like picture of a toenail or whatever, but like just doing that is non-emotional and non-decision making. It's like, let me just reduce this. It generally will reduce things from this, maybe with pictures only to this, but like with paper, it's to like this, you know? Um, and as you do that, your brain starts to adjust to what is there. It knows what's there. And so it's no longer this ambiguous thing. Um, but yeah, work through that process. And then, um, I don't know. I don't feel like that was a great answer. Okay. What's a reasonable amount of time to allocate to Dana K. White a single room? <laughs> Y'all are the best today. Okay. Um, I don't think that way. Like I literally, because my method is progress and only progress, which means you can stop at any point in the process and you're only going to be better than you were before. Like that's it. Doesn't mean you're going to be done but you will have less. The space will be better. You'll have made progress. Okay. Because of that, you literally do not have to know how much time you're going to have. So that means you can say, I don't have any time today, but I have this weird three minute awkward pause. I'm going to go to that overwhelming room and I'm going to throw away trash for three minutes. That is going to improve that space. And it's going to give you a different perspective on that room. So as you do that, um, so because my tendency, Dana K. White's actual real tendency is to want to know exactly how something, how long something is going to take and how long I should set aside and what I need to do. And I need to make other arrangements for my kids and my people and my blah, 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 blah. Um, instead, this is what helped me really make progress was to take that out of the equation and just say, I'm going to do this in a way where I don't have to know how much time. That means that if I have eight hours, I follow the exact same process. I don't do it differently because I think I have more time. I follow the exact same progress and I make huge, huge process. And then I make huge progress in those eight hours. But if I thought I had eight hours and I actually only had 13 minutes, I still only made progress and it was still worth my time. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so I don't have a definite answer on this because it's something I'm dealing with in my new house as well. I have deep cabinets as my pantry. How do I keep from losing things, paper inventory, organizing items? So hard, oh, pay, oh paper inventory, like that being an option, organizing items, so hard to control, especially since they are under the counters. Um, so I have this on my top of my kitchen pantry thing. It's very far back there. And um, I basically only store things in the front part that I can see because it just doesn't work otherwise. So it's kind of like that part's just not part of the container because if it's back there, I'm never going to remember it's there. Um, on the one that I can see better, I do have the stair step organizer. Okay. That's an organizing product. I, I know container store has it. I'm sure you can just find them on Amazon as well. Um, but a stair step thing. So that means that I can see what's right here. And then I can see, you know, rising up what's what's back there um, at the back. Um, as far as like the things I am grateful for is the the bottom ones of my pantry thing do have the pull out shelves. And that actually helps a ton. Um, but I know but I don't usually like to give advice that requires remodeling of your home, you know. Um, so when it comes down to it, ultimately you might have to like put empty boxes back there or something just to kind of block off that space and be like, 
unfortunately, I don't have that space because for me to pretend I have that space and to try to do things in a way where I have that space, but if I'm going to just forget that it exists, then that stuff is going to be wasted anyway. You know, I'll be rebuying it because I won't remember that I have it because I can't actually see it. So it's kind of like embracing the realities of the space that you have and your own clutter threshold, how your brain works. But, but I don't know. You may be better off on that than me. I don't know. Um, oh, I love it. That makes me so happy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up today. Um, let's see. Question. Do you have any suggestion? Oh, I already did this one. Oh, am I going back up? I'm sorry. I'm going to go back down now because I obviously am not seeing the new questions. Um, what do I do with stuffed animals? You contain them. Um, I don't know. That sounds like a super like, just uh, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, that's how I had to think of it. So it's give them a space, some sort of a, a defined space, and then put your favorite ones in first and anything that doesn't fit needs to go. Uh, if you are like, well, but I, I have to keep, it's full of all my favorites. I can't get rid of those, but I have to keep these two. Well, then something else has to go to have more. So it's like using the container concept helps you sort through what it, it just helps sort out things that you truly love that deserve space that are container worthy from the other things that aren't. Um, let's see. Should I be decluttering the many photos and vids on my phone? How to go about it? I, I mean, it depends on how much storage you have, right? Like, um, I don't talk a lot about this, you know, but I know there are apps that I, and there's one that I've heard of that I've been like, oh, I need to get that, but I haven't. Um, one of the things, you know, that I do is I try to be like, okay, this is a little awkward pause thing. When I'm out and about, I can delete photos. I actually, when my daughter was younger, I gave her the job of organizing my photos in my phone. So she knew, I think, I think I gave her a dollar for every hundred photos that she uh, got through either, you know, deleting duplicates or, you know, organizing them into folders and stuff. So, um, I don't know my word. This makes me laugh. Y'all are cracking me up today. Okay. College kid moved home temporarily three years ago. It is it time to let go of the extra dishes, microwave, et cetera, that we're not using as, is, as it is making me nuts storing this in our basement. Um, so that's tough because I mean, I know I'm, I'm in that, my kids are in that same phase of life as well. So, um, I think it, it's up to you, you know, I mean, you decide like, am I willing to think of my, to define my basement as the space that we have for the stuff for my kids? kids that they might need as they, you know, move out on their own at some point. Um, if not, then you say, okay, I'm defining my basement as something else. It serves another purpose and it is worth the money that I might have to spend in the future to help them or that they might have to spend in the future, whatever, uh, to get set up for me to, you know, I'm putting that, that value, let's say it would take me $400. I don't know. Okay. I'm just, pulling that number out of my head. Somebody I'll be like, that's not enough. Somebody I'll be like, that's too much. Uh, but it'd be $400 for me to buy back this stuff eventually down the road seven years from now. Is it worth it to me to have a basement that has another purpose that it's fulfilling for our family right now as we are not knowing how long this is going to be? Um, is it, you know, worth $400 for me to have this space be what I want it to be for the next uh, seven years? Okay. Um, let's see. My deep container, it's cabinet. It's over the fridge. I can't reach in there. I put seasonal decor. It's safe and dry up there. Yeah, I, I love it. Okay. Um, oh, goodness gracious. Today went really fast to me for some reason. All right. So everybody go Dana K. White. 
My husband will not think it's that funny when I tell him about that today. He's not going to think it's funny. He will. He'll think it's funny, but he will roll his eyes. I promise you. Um, all right. Y'all are doing great. I love hearing about your stuff that you're working on. Okay. I um, just want to remind you the patreon.com that's up there. Oh, here's one more question. This is it. Okay. This is it y'all. What causes someone to fill all surfaces and then never touch it again? I swear there's a hands-off sign once the pile mounds. What's the, what underlines this lifelong disorder? Well, that's not a question I can answer quickly or that I am qualified to answer. Um, I call it slob vision. I, I do not see incremental mess. Okay. Oh, am I still here? I don't know. It says on my internet slow. Anyway, I don't see incremental mess. I see perfectly clean, super duper messy to where it's overwhelming. And then it feels like too much. The cure to that is the progress and no progress, progress and no progress, progress and only progress, never a bigger mess method. Knowing that every teeny tiny step I'm going to do, I'm going to fulfill completely. I'm going to pull trash off. I'm going to throw it all the way away. I'm going to take things where they go according to using the two questions um as the um I, i'm, I'm going to go through this process making progress and only progress as i go and knowing that i can do that means again like we talked about before it is worth it to do five minutes because the problem is when i only see perfectly clean and overwhelmingly messy and i think that i have to set aside a certain amount of time to deal with that mess and I've always done things in the past where I just set things aside to deal with later and made it worse. Then it was like, okay, now I'm in this situation and I'm blathering here because I can't remember what I was talking about. Um, but, but now I'm in a situation where I keep putting it off and putting it off because I think I need so much time to deal with it because it's so overwhelming. And then it just gets worse and worse, which makes it more overwhelming. So instead to use the progress and only progress method is the way to go. I mean, it just, that is the solution to this because you're going to change how you think about your stuff. You're going to change your house and it just, I'm, I'm telling you it works. So, okay. I hate to stop, but it is time for me to stop. So it's been fun and I will talk to y'all next week.